Now we want to apply the intention-based reciprocity model to a prisoner's dilemma. Let us consider the following um, prisoner's dilemma. Here I wrote down the normal form of the game. So we have two players who, which can either cooperate or defect. You see that um, if, if both cooperate, they are better off than in the case where both will defect. However, from an individual perspective, defecting is always better than cooperating. So now we want to apply the intention-based model by Rabin. And the first question we want to ask if, if there is a fairness equilibrium. Fairness equilibrium is, is how the equilibria of the intention-based models are um, denoted, uh, in which both players defect. What do we do? We check if players do have deviation incentives if from this equilibrium. So we assume that, that both players are playing defecting and then see if, if they have an incentive to deviate, individual incentive to deviate. So let us write down the to-do list. What, what do we have to do? So first of all, we have to, to check the material payoffs, which is quite easy. Then in the second step, we will determine player two's kindness or player one's belief about player two's kindness. And finally, we will determine player one's kindness or player one's belief about player two's belief about player one's kindness. And then finally, we will compare the utilities. And by comparing the utilities, we can check if players have deviation incentives. OK, let us start with checking the material payoffs. The material payoff of, we are checking the material payoff of player one, given that player two is playing the equilibrium or the supposed to be equilibrium strategy of defecting. So in this case, if player one cooperates and player two defects, then the utility of player one is just zero. Right? So player two is defecting, so I'm cooperating, I get zero. If both players defect, then player one gets X. After checking the material payoffs, we now proceed to determine player two's kindness. We determine player two's kindness when defecting, given that player one either cooperates or also defects. So we will plug in into this formula. And here we consider the case in which player two is defecting and player one is cooperating. So first of all, we have to determine player one's material payoff when player one is cooperating and player two is defecting. In this case, this payoff is just given by zero. Then we have to determine the equitable payoff. So if player one is cooperating, then player two, if player one is cooperating, then player two is the highest player two can assign to player one is 4x by also cooperating. And by defecting, the payoff of player one is zero. So the equitable or average of these two payments is just minus or it's just 2x. PIH is the highest payoff player two can give to, to player one given that player one is defecting, uh, is cooperating. So if player one is cooperating, 4x is the highest payoff player one can get and zero is the lowest profit 
player one can get. So we end up with these numbers. So here it's minus 2x over 4x, which gives us minus one half. As we said, negative numbers reflect unkind behavior. So if player one cooperates, defecting by player two is an unkind action. Now let us look at the case where player one is defecting and check if player two also defecting is kind or unkind. So we proceed as, as before. So first we take the material payoff, which is just the payoff when both are defecting. And then we have to calculate the equitable out, uh, payoff, which is just the average of the possible outcomes when player one is defecting. When player one is defecting, he gets either 6x or x, which means the average of these two numbers is just 3.5. The highest payoff player one can get is 6x. The lowest payoff he can get is just x. So we end up with minus 2.5x over 5x, which results in minus one half, which means for player two playing defect when player one is playing defect is also an unkind action. To be more precise, in both cases, playing defect is the unkindest, most unkind thing I can do. In the third step, we have to determine our own kindness. Our own kindness is something we can have influence on. So we can choose between cooperating or defecting. Again, we are in, uh, investigating the equilibrium in which the, or the equilibrium candidate in which the other guy is defecting. So we have to see how kind we are to the other one if we are cooperating and how nice we are to the other one when defecting. And we just take the kindness function where we plug in the numbers. So let us start with the case of the other one defecting and we cooperating. So in this case, the other one is defecting, we are cooperating. In this case, the payment of the other is just given by 6x. If the other one is defecting, he can either get 6x if we are cooperating or x if we are defecting. This means the equitable outcome is given by the average of these two um, payments, which is just 3.5x. The highest payment the other can get when playing defecting is 6x and the lowest payment the other can get is just x. If we calculate it here, we, we get two and a half x uh, here, five x here, which means this expression is one half, which means that we are kind towards the other when we are cooperating and believe that the other one is defective. So let us also check how nice we are if the other one is defecting and we are also defecting. In this case, the material payoff of the other is just given by, by x. The possible or the equitable outcome does not change to above, so it's just minus 3.5x. And the highest and the lowest payoff also do not change. So what we see here is, if we summarize this, we get minus one half, which is unkind. So from here we see that when the other one is defecting and we are cooperating, then we are kind. And if the other one is defecting and we are also defecting, then we are unkind. So now we've determined both the kindness of the other one and our own kindness and can proceed. 
Finally, in the last step, we have to compare the utilities. So here I've written down the utility function of player i. And I mean, this is a symmetric game, so it, it also works for the other player. And now we have to, yeah, basically do the math, plug in everything we know, and we want to check player one's utility when player two defects and player one cooperates. So I cooperate, the other defects, and the other things that I cooperate. When I cooperate and the other defects, then my payoff is just zero. And the other one is behaving unkind. So here it's minus one half, as we calculated earlier. However, I am behaving kind by cooperating, which means here this expression is one half. So we get a total utility of minus three over four. If I decide to defect, so everyone is defecting and the other player also believes or anticipates that I am defecting, then my monetary payoff is X. The other one is behaving unkind by playing defect. I am also behaving unkind by defecting and we can express our utility just by x minus 1 over 4. What you can see is defecting, if the other one is defecting, is always greater, is always resulting in a greater utility than cooperating when the other one is defecting. So we get as a result, there is a fairness equilibrium in which both players defect. And the existence of this fairness equilibrium in which both players behave unkind is independent of the size of x. So we've proven that the equilibrium of the, the standard game, the game with um, standard preferences, is still an um, fairness equilibrium.